last week, we spent a little time going through the history of the iPhone. And you know this, but cell phones are not a new thing. Here's a fun dinner conversation starter. Ask the adults in your life, like your grandparents or set parents, or maybe an aunt or uncle, about the first phone that they had or what was normal for them when they were growing up. The average person spends four hours and 10 minutes on their phone every day, and over 5.2 billion people use a phone worldwide. 72% of teenagers scroll first thing in the morning. I am part of that percentage. The first mobile phone came out in 1983 and was known as the Brick. And here we are 40 plus years later, and the data doesn't lie. People are still obsessed with their phones. So what's so special about a cell phone? It's not necessarily the phone itself. I mean, how often do you actually use your phone to make a phone call compared to everything else we use our phones for? Let's talk about the camera or what about the app store? Our phone is literally a little computer that we hold in our pockets and fit into our hands. We wear out the web browser. It gives us instant access to information wherever we are. Fact check, here we come. And maps, what would we do without GPS in our lives? So while phones have been around for years, it's really the features of the smartphone that make it valuable to us. Phones have changed our world for the better, right? I mean, there are so many positive impacts of smartphones today, but if we're being honest here, there are also some not great things too. The constant comparison on social media or the addiction to likes and followers or the cyberbullying that's actually increased anxiety and depression. Scrolling has taken over our lives and when we see what's really a highlight reel of people's lives, which is not really the whole story, we begin to think that what's on social media is the real deal of daily life. That highlight is the new standard, and suddenly we feel like our clothes aren't trendy enough or the thing that I already have isn't good enough anymore. When I'm so focused on the next thing I want or what she has or what they're doing, sometimes I lose sight of who I am. I'm gonna be super transparent with you right now. When I am not sure of who I am, I am at the mercy of anything and everything that makes me feel worthy. I know what it feels like to be desperate for something or someone to make me feel special. In fact, we are all intrinsically looking to be valued and wanted and loved and important. Maybe you move schools and you're trying to figure out who you are and where you fit in. Or maybe you're a middle child and you don't really feel seen. Maybe you're struggling with finding friends and just want someone to like you. Or maybe someone said something to you and their words made you question everything about yourself. Or you've always been an athlete, but because of that injury, you're not sure who you are anymore. Or maybe you've never excelled at anything and you just wanna find one thing you're good at. When we find ourselves feeling a little bit lost and unsure of ourselves, we look around and try to find that thing that makes us feel special or worthy and valuable. But just like with our phones, we often associate value with features. Our world tells us that something is more valuable if it can do more things if its special features outshine something else. Unfortunately, the same is true when it comes to people. Too often, we find our value in what our special features are, not only physically, but also what and how much we're able to do. Maybe you feel valuable when you get straight A's, or when you score more points in a game, or when you took extra long to get ready and someone gave you that exact compliment you were wanting to get. Maybe you feel valuable when you do all of your chores or help your parents around the house, or you just got a car so all of a sudden your friends are inviting you to come with and drive. Or you finally beat that level and your gamer crew is in awe of what you can do. Or you finally reach that 1,000 followers on social media and you're still counting. What if your value has nothing to do with your features? What if you're more than what you're able to do or what you bring to the table? We're gonna take a look at something that the Apostle Paul wrote about who we are. Now, Paul used to be known as Saul the Pharisee, and he knew a lot about placing value on the things he had done. Pharisees were religious leaders, and they often thought that they were better than others because of their religious accomplishments and status. In fact, Paul said he was a Pharisee among Pharisees, meaning the best of the best. But let's listen to what Paul says. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. 
God has always been this ambiguous, big, and powerful heavenly being, but no one had ever known what God looked like until Jesus gave us a physical image of the invisible God. But here's the thing, Jesus wasn't created. He always existed even before the universe began. And Paul says that everything God created in heaven and on earth was created through Christ. When it came to talking about creation, Paul would have been very familiar with the creation account in Genesis. After all, he was a Pharisee, which meant that he had actually memorized the first five books of the Bible called the Torah. So Paul would have been able to quote the end of the creation story, which says this. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So humans were created in the image of God, the creator of all things, and you are a human, so that includes you. You are created in the image of your creator. Now, you personalize it. I am created by a creator. Not just the physical image of God, but also God's spiritual likeness. God made you on purpose for a purpose. And here's what's amazing. The creator who created you, that creator is love. The disciple John said it quite simply, God is love. God is not only a loving God, but God embodies love itself. Someone has wisely said that God is love, loving. And that means you are created by love, to love, and to be loved. Not only are you loved, but you are chosen. You have a purpose. God sees you. God knows you. God cares for you. You are a child of God. You are understood. You are forgiven. You are saved by grace, not by the things you do. You are a masterpiece created in Christ Jesus. God designed you and made you and chose you. You are God's masterpiece, and contrary to what the world tells you, your value is about whose you are, not solely in what you do. We live in a world that is non-stop, where busyness equals importance, and people are introduced with the question, so, what do you do? We have to fight to change our perspective and understanding of value because the world has told us for years that what we do makes us who we are. Have you ever heard the phrase, we are human beings, not human doings? It reminds us that we were not created to do, but to be. To be in God's love and to be who God created us to be. And what we do is important and part of being made in the image of God is working, but who we are and whose we are is more important than solely what we do. This is easier said than done, and I know it firsthand. I was in my first year of working, and out of nowhere, a giant project landed on my shoulders, and I had no idea how I was gonna accomplish it. I was still fresh out of school and in my early career, so I really wanted this to be an opportunity where I was able to show my coworkers what I could accomplish. I worked for hours on end for a few months to try and make something that felt impossible feel like it was perfect, and it wasn't. I was hoping that all of my hard work would make my coworkers value my creativity in a way that probably wouldn't have shined much without the opportunity to pull this off. But after spending months and months with literally hundreds of hours of writing and organizing and heavy lifting, literally, the day arrived to show the work I had put into this project. And within seconds, I mean literal seconds, the things that took me forever to do were unraveled and it was immediately out of my control. On one hand, I was really glad that the team I was leading could create something so beautiful from the things I had prepared. But on the other hand, I realized that even though I spent so much time trying to make something perfect, nothing really changed about the way my team and coworkers valued me. The reason wasn't because I didn't do a good job prepping the project, but it was really because they didn't value me for what I could do, they valued me for who I am. It's not easy to shift our identity source from doing to being. In fact, I feel like we're all trying to unlearn years of believing that what we are valued for is what we do, but it won't change overnight. So where do we start? Ask yourself this, what happens if I find value solely in what I do? If doing is what makes me valuable, what happens when I'm not doing that thing? Is it possible for me to find my worth in something that lasts forever as opposed to something that ends? Even the greatest professional athletes retire at some point. There has to be a basis of worth that goes beyond sports. Imagine how much better it would feel to have your worth resting firmly on a stronger foundation. Let's say that this box is what I do. It's important stuff and it's things that I really enjoy like getting good grades and sports, band, theater, college applications. I mean, it's all in this box. This stuff is good and part of worshiping God is doing this stuff to the best of our ability. Listen, 
God knows how many hairs are on your head. God knows when a bird falls out of a tree. You don't have to wonder if God cares about everything you're involved in. All those areas of life where you want to do well, God cares about them more than you could ever imagine. God isn't telling you to sit back idly and quit caring about your grades or the instrument you play, but it's not designed to hold up our worth and value. I want you to stand on something stronger and more stable. God cares about what's in this box, but God is more concerned with you knowing who you are. God created you and you are so important to God. If you knew that your worth didn't change, how much more peace and joy would you have? There's no downside to seeing your value through God's eyes. Get your worth from your creator. Quit basing it on your performance. You will really love and enjoy your life more. Where do you see God's identity in the people around you? Identify where you see God's identity in someone else. Take a look around you or think of a good friend. If we are created in the image of God, then God is reflected in each person. So where do you see God in your friend? Or how does the person next to you reflect God? Where do you see God's identity in yourself? Now it's your turn. And sometimes this can be 10 times harder than seeing God in someone else. Where do you see God's image in yourself? Are you kind and compassionate? Are you a leader? Are you filled with joy and bring others joy? Do you bring peace to situations? Fill in the blank and say this to yourself. I am created by the creator and I am blank like God is. Sometimes it's hard to identify or acknowledge God's image in yourself, but that's part of why God designed us for community. We need one another. We need to tell each other how we see God in one another. We need to remind others and be reminded that whose we are is more important than what we do. And when we stumble and fall into the trap of believing that what we do gives us value, we need to lean on each other as we relearn and redefine ourselves by God's standards instead of the world's. So. When you head to your group, think about this question. How can you remember you are created by the creator?